Hello everyone, today in this video we'll be discussing the super important questions of OOPS uh, with Java and uh, this is the video which you need for scoring 80% marks in exam and this video is sufficient for you make sure you watch this video till the end and before starting please do like and subscribe it helps to make more videos like this so without wasting more time let's get started the first question is explain the following operations this is the left shift operator and this is the right shift operator and this is the logical right shift operator okay so what are the things you need to write okay this is the left shift operator is uh, it shifts the bit of the numbers to the left by specified number of positions okay now let's take an example here okay the example is number we have to specify and n value we have to specify how many uh, bits we have to shift to the left okay so if the number is taken as 5 this is the example you need to write then result will be equal to number and left shift by 2 okay what is the meaning of left shift by 2 is see when you left shift by 2 at that uh, time what happens this is 101 right 101 if we left shift by 2 then what happens in the first two places two zeros will come right i just shifted it by two places here so what happens the now the number is 10100 in that case the uh, e uh, decimal equivalent of that is 20 okay that is called as left shift operator the right shift operator right shifts it okay so what happens if we take number as 20 here which is 10100 and we do the right shift operator here what happens 101 comes and shifts to the two left place uh, right places so the number comes as 101 which is equal to 5 okay so this is what uh, left shift and right shift is now another thing is there logical right shift in logical right shift uh, the only difference is that if it's an uh, if it is a negative integer it will be taken as unsigned integer okay so you just what you just need to understand is the negative number is replaced by zeros okay so you can just write this example minus 20 you can write here and number uh, logical right shift of 2 what will happen is 0 0 will be added here okay the 0 0 will be added here because this whole number whatever is the negative number will be shifted uh, to the right when it will be shifted to the right and the starting point is 0 then it will be considered as a positive integer and this is a very huge integer okay if it is starting from 1 it will be negative integer if it is starting from 0 it will be a positive integer okay if it's written in the uh, 32 bit form okay in that case only we consider uh, if it's starting from 1 or 0 so basically you just have to write this example no need to write these things here just need to write that it will be uh, replaced with 0 this line you need to write a negative numbers will have the sign bit replaced with 0 this is all you need to write okay Moving on to the second super important question, we have explained the object oriented principles. Okay, so there are three object oriented principles. What do you mean by object oriented uh, principles? See, in object oriented programming, we have a class and an object. Okay, we have a class and an object. What are the principles that govern the class and object? Means, what are the rules we need to follow? There are three main rules encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism. These are the three features you can uh, think of. Okay, like features of uh, object oriented programming. First is encapsulation. Okay, what is encapsulation? It is a mechanism that binds together code and data okay encapsulation means suppose that you have a toffee okay this is the toffee you have now you are uh, putting the toffee in a wrapper okay that is called as encapsulating you are hiding it from the outside world okay that is what is called enca encapsulation we will be hiding the code and data from the outside world okay and keep uh, both safe from the outside interference and misuse okay and uh, it can be either private or public private means no one can access only the uh, users who have the access to access the data can access and public means anyone can access okay but both come in the encapsulation only next is inheritance okay inheritance means the process by which object acquires the properties of another object so suppose that there is a uh, car here okay i want to create another car with having the same features as this one but it should have little different features so what i will do i will inherit the features of this car and uh, whatever changes i want to make that i'll make in the new car so what happens all the features from this i got here and i just made changes to few of them here that is what is called inheritance so you have to write this in the exam inheritance is the process by which an object acquires the properties of another object okay an example is also given here golden retriever is a classification of dog and dogs are a classification of mammal class which are under a larger class called as animal from animal there is a class mammal inside the class mammal there is a class dog inside the class dog there is a uh, class called as golden retriever okay so this is the example you need to write next is polymorphism polymorphism means many forms okay so suppose that uh, i'll tell you like uh, this example what is one plus one one plus one is equal to two but if i take the same thing as the string values one plus 1 in strings what you will be getting okay 1 plus 1 in string will be getting 11 okay so in programming language plus is used both for addition as well as concatenation okay means joining together two things okay that both things uh, this is used 
uh, what uh, the same uh, symbol is used this feature is called as polymorphism okay so the concept of polymorphism is often expressed by the phrase one interface and multiple methods okay we got a third super important question we have developed a java program to add two matrices using command line this is a very important question repeated one okay so how do you add two matrices using command line arguments so we have to define first a class so yeah public class matrix addition inside that public static void main function will be defining and here we will be checking uh if any arguments are passed this thing you can skip okay this thing you can skip it's not a uh, compulsory one but the compulsory code start from here we'll be declaring three 2d matrices first is matrix one with the size three comma three and matrix 2 also with the same size and adding all uh, both of them will uh, we need result and matrix also to show the result that is also 3 and 3 okay now we'll start the index from 0 and we'll be uh, running a double for loop here okay we'll be running a double for loop and we'll be uh, assigning the values in matrix 1 okay whatever the uh, values are being uh, sent through the command line argument that will be first saved in matrix 1 comma 1 uh, means the first matrix it will be stored like that again a double for loop you have to run and store it into the second for loop okay means second matrix after that just again run the same for loop i is equal to 0 to 3 j is equal to 0 to 3 and the rows and the columns will be saved with the addition of that particular row and column for each matrix okay so result and matrix is stored and finally we write a function for displaying the result again the double for loop we'll be using and we'll be uh, printing whatever is the result for each i and j value okay so suppose that input line arguments was 1 till uh, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So in that case, there are totally 18 uh, arguments are passed here. So all of them will be stored. And when we add all of them together, we will be getting a resultant matrix 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Why? Because 1 will be getting added with 9, 2 will be getting added with 8, 3 will be getting added with 7. Like that it is stored, right? This is the second matrix. Okay, this is the first matrix. So first matrix, first element will be added with the second matrix, first element. Second matrix, second element will be added with the... Uh, second uh, matrix second element third element of this matrix third element of this matrix so eventually the answer will be all 10 only okay this is the simple example you can write in the exam okay moving on to the fourth super important question we have discussed the different data types supported by java along with different default values and literals okay so see here what are the primitive data types is defined in java there are eight primitive uh, data types the first one is byte short int long char float double and boolean okay these are the eight different data types also they are uh, referred to as simple types okay these can be put into four groups first is integers okay this whole thing can be divided into four groups in integer group we will be having byte short int and long which is dealing with numbers okay just the normal numbers not the decimal ones if you want to deal with the decimal numbers we'll be using the uh, floating point which includes float and double okay this is another group which will be having float and double okay so byte short int long float and double is done char is remaining char is nothing but the uh, literals and uh, boolean is remaining so character will be coming inside the char and the boolean will be having bool values which is true or false okay after writing this you have to define each of these okay integer with example you have to define so in integer the four things you define right byte short int and long so what are the differences between them it just differs in the range okay there are different ranges you need not memorize these ranges just you need to uh, write that what are the different widths of it okay means how many uh, spaces will be there to insert the values okay this is the thing you need to write okay byte byte is the smallest integer type okay it has the 8 bit type which ranges from minus 128 to 127 okay this is the byte here okay and short will be ranging from minus 32k to 32k and int will be ranging from this range to this range and long will be ranging from this to this okay so it's just increasing the values uh, and briefly you have to write this for integers moving on we have the floating point uh, types in floating point two are there the first one is the float and second one is the uh, double okay so float uses 32 bits of storage and uh, double uses 64 bit of storage that's all you need to write okay next is characters in characters we'll be have storing the uh, letters okay like a b c d plus minus operators also everything will be storing in characters okay numbers also we can store in characters if you put a single quote here so this will become a character okay this is the character you need to write this information boolean will be having either true or false value that will be writing here okay Moving on to the fifth super important question, we have explained different types of if statements in Java. Okay, so if statement, there are three types of if statement. Basically, what is if statement? If statement is if a condition is true, a statement is to be performed, else another statement needs to be performed. This is called as if condition. Okay, so an example we can take here. Let's take two integers a and b. If a is less than b, 
then make a as 0 else make b as 0 suppose that a is equal to 5 and b is equal to 6 now which is smaller a is smaller right so this condition will become true if a is less than b yes it's less than b so a's value will become 0 this is the working of if condition okay Similarly, we have uh, the nested if condition as well. Okay, in nested if condition, we'll be having an if condition inside an if condition. Okay, how this works? Firstly, if i is equal to equal to 10, will be checked. If i's value is uh, equal to 10, we'll be entering this uh, loop here. Okay, we'll be entering this statement here. Then only we'll be checking these conditions if this becomes true. So inside this also some conditions are that we are checking even this uh, j value. Is j less than 20 or not? If it's less than 20, make the a value of a as b. Okay, if k again if this is true will be uh, sorry uh, no no this is separate okay so nested if means inside if condition there is another if condition and another if condition okay so this is just uh, related to uh, if condition these are separate if conditions okay this if condition is not in inside this if condition okay so if k is greater than 100 c makes uh, c equal to d means the value of d will be stored in c else value of c will be stored in a okay so associated with this else this if and else is connected this is a separate if and this is the main if inside which all this if else is there okay and if this condition is not true then else uh, a's value will become d okay this is the example you need to write for nested if condition next if else if ladder okay now if else if ladder looks like this if a condition is true do this statement else if another condition is true do that statement whenever one condition becomes true that statement will be performed then the remaining one will not be checked okay so i repeat if one condition becomes true the uh, condition whatever the statement is there that is performed and uh, the remaining conditions are skipped if this condition is not true then check this condition if this condition is also not true then check this condition and if this condition is not true skip it check the next condition so on if none of the conditions are true else means at the end this statement will be executed whatever is present here that will be executed so it is just a multiple if conditions okay with along with else okay this is the thing you need to write for uh, if else if ladder okay Moving on to the last super important question of this module, we have how arrays are defined and used in Java. Okay, so arrays is a group of like type variables. Okay, the same type variables. I discussed the types right in the previous question. There can be in, float, uh, char, bool, double, float, and uh, so a few more were there so those type uh, if they are of same types are there in a group that is called as an array okay so how do we declare an array the de de uh, uh, declaration of array will be requiring a type which type of array you want to declare whether you want to declare an into array int array or char array or a bool array or a byte array or a short array or an int array whatever the array type you want to declare you will be writing it here and the variable name will be specified here and the size will be specified size means how much uh, you need how many spaces you need how many uh, things you need to store okay so an example we can consider here int month days and no size is given no size means it is an empty area how many ever we want we can put it but usually we specify some size here let's suppose that we put size as 12 because the, uh, there are 12 months okay and in each month what are the days that will be stored in the array so a visualization of this is int month days will be declaring and month days will be declaring new int as 12 okay so 12 is the size we declared and month days is an array which is initialized in the memory it will have 12 blocks here okay this is what is called an array with 12 blocks okay the zeroth location 31 will be stored first uh, what is this zero zero means the index value in the uh, first location it starts from zero so in the zeroth location 31 is stored in the first location 28 is stored in the second location something will be stored like that they will be having uh, till uh, 0 to 11 0 to 11 means 12 spaces in all these spaces whatever is to be stored we are doing it using this operation here okay these all don't miss any more of these questions. These are the most uh, repeated ones. And please do like and subscribe. It helps me make more just like this. That's all for this video. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.